Howdy guys, Attorney Walter Nott, and I'm live right now going to go ahead and go through questions that you might have, even as Shadow, apparently just right as the show is beginning, is crawling up on my lap to go ahead and get some kisses. So let's go ahead and begin with the basics. Come here. Oh my goodness, you're adorable. Let me get you. Hold on. Oh my goodness. Let me get you. All right. There we go. We got it, baby. All right. So we had some uh, Shadow, shadow Snuggle moments right there. There we go. Okay, perfect. So what we're going to be doing is going over... The usual, which is answering questions related to Social Security Disability Benefits, including SSDI, that's the Quarters of Coverage Program, SSI, that's the Supplemental Security Income Program, and also we're going to be basically going through Disability Adult Child Benefits as well, because a lot of people have questions about that, and that's a tricky, tricky subject. So um, there is somebody who called me a couple of times right before the show. I do have a bunch of people lived up, uh, lined up to go ahead and talk with us today. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and uh, just do some real quick basic stuff, and then we're going to call that person right back. Uh, real quick, I mean, I'm doing this really fast. The website isn't truly ready yet. I know I always talk about it. I know you guys aren't that interested in it, but still, spaceconstitution.com. It's the idea of creating future constitution for you know future nations, sovereign nations in space, stuff like that. All right, I'm not going to spend much time on it, but I'll catch up with you guys on that if you want to at that channel in the near future. Trailer's almost done, stuff like that, and so is the website. Okay, let's go ahead and call this person right now, get them on the line, and get the ball rolling so that we can get right to this real quick. All right, let's see what we got. Howdy, guys. How you doing? Okay, so let's see. Okay. Uh, one sec -a -roo. We're going to go ahead and dial the phone number and get the ball rolling. And here we go. One sec, Roo, guys. We'll get the person on the phone, then we should be good to go. This is so my usual luck with this show. Let me see. Please leave your message for... <laughs> spelled four times, and then I'm calling back once. All right, anyways. Let's see. Here we go. <clears throat> Howdy, howdy. Perfect. I forgot my phone is acting up, been acting up today. And for some reason, it's not showing me every call. Okay. It's called Come Through. Okay. Yeah, I'm not no sure. No biggie, no biggie at all. Make sure you use a fake name because we are live on YouTube right now. So let's go ahead and talk about this real quick. Um, what seems to be the question that you have? Okay. Um, I have, I'm trying to do the uh, reconsideration sure. for... Uh, child disability. Um, now they just they. Why well, this is the weirdest thing? They just approved him to receive money, but they said he probably does need medical because basically everything that they, I guess that they investigated was true. Uh huh. But they said that doesn't mean that he needs a check. Okay. Uh, so uh, walk me through this. So they're paying him or not paying him? They say no. They said if I, if. if if I want to um, get medical, then they just tell me just have to go to try to apply for the Medicaid. Okay, walk me through this. If I want to appeal it, then you know I can appeal it. How old is the child? He's fourteen. Fourteen years old. So we're looking at an SSI claim, not a DAC. And tell me this. Um, so is the question just how to appeal into the next uh, you know level, or is this like a more complex? Why did he not get found disabled? Okay, this, this is right after I, I did the initial claim in April okay. and, and gave her all the information and the lady kept calling me back for different stuff and then she just sent me a letter and the letter said, you know, it was dated for August 7th and said I had 60 days. I had no idea what to do and I was like, oh, forget it because if you're going to tell me he is disabled and then you tell me he don't deserve the benefits, I'm confused. Okay. Because he's smart. Okay. But he is definitely disabled. Okay, so it sounds like a classic denial. Sounds like, you know, they reviewed the claim, you know, looked to see whether or not the individual had the capacity to go ahead and be found uh, severely disabled under the child elements, which are the three-step sequential process. The ways that you can appeal are pretty simple and straightforward. There's either the online appeal process, which is where you just Google appeal SSA disability claim into Google, and that will pop up and show you a link to go ahead and do your appeal. 
The other option is to go ahead and download the following forms, an SSA-561 and an SSA-3441. Again, an SSA-561 and an SSA-3441. And those will be the two forms that you need to go ahead and complete to submit and send in uh, specifically for an appeal from the initial filing level up to the reconsideration level. And here's why that's important. Um, obviously, you get 60 days plus five you know, to mail. So what that means is you get 65 days. Now, if you run into an issue where you go over that, something happens, procrastinating, whatever, you can use the statute for the 404.911 to go ahead and ex, you know, uh, to expand that 60-day allowable period. Uh, and you'll see when you look at that statute the reasons of why you could do that and what would be considered an excusable negligence form uh, of expanding that 60 days. And then the other way you could do it is you call, could call the local SSA Gatlin Ave office, set up an appointment, and they can work with you over the phone to go ahead and appeal you. Okay, so you're saying I can call the Social Security office and have someone help me to do the, uh, the reconsideration form? Yes, but keep in mind, with COVID going on, there's all these weird little rules, all these weird little changes, all these weird little things that are going on, which means that if they're not all at the offices like they traditionally are, many of them are home, they may not be able to do the same functions at the office that which you know most people have come, become accustomed to. So your best bet is to go online and fill out the appeal, or if you can't do that, print out the 3441 and 561 forms, complete those, and fax them or mail them into the Social Security field office. Okay, so um, let me see. So can you say it a little slower while I go online to do the appeal? Sure. So in order to go ahead and do the appeal online, it's really simple. You just go to Google. You put into Google Appeal SSA Social Security Disability Claim. Again, Appeal SSA Social Security Disability Claim. And remember, the first three or four links are all just spam and law firms and you know non-law firms and insurance companies that are paying you know two thousand dollars a month to be at the top of the search menu. So the bottom line is. Make sure you don't fall for any of those quick links. Um, you want to make sure that you go ahead and find the actual SSA.gov website, and that's what you're going to use to go ahead and appeal from initial filing level to reconsideration. Okay, and when I when I get to that link that says .gov, basically that's what you're saying. If I go, I Google appeal SSA Social Security claim. Did you say this? Did you say .gov or this claim? So it's uh, the, the actual link here. Let me just give you the link. That way you have it. Hold on. Uh, SSA. Uh, appeal. SSA. Disability claim. And we're going to skip a bunch of these initial ones. We're going to go down to the appeals process. We're going to click through. Oh, no, wait. That's the wrong one. Hold on. Da, 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 da. There we go. You're going to click on the appeal decision. And then reconsideration, request medical reconsideration. God, when they build these websites, it's absolutely shameful what they do. It's just terrible. All right, so now are you part of the chat right now? Because I'm going to put the link directly into the chat. I have no idea. I'm not picky at all. Okay. So I haven't clicked like so many of your links trying to figure out which one is one I'm supposed to lie, one I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, okay, no biggie. So this is what you're going to go ahead and uh, put into your computer. Secure, you know, in the URL bar. Secure, S-E-C-U-R-E, -E, secure. Oh, wait, let me go, I'll go up to the URL. Okay, let me go to that. I didn't yeah. know what that is. Okay. So type secure. Yep, secure dot S-S-A dot gov. Again, secure dot S-S-A dot gov slash I A P P L S R E slash start. And that's that uh, so it's um secure.ssa.gov slash I A P P L S R E slash start. Start? Yep. And that should be uh, the button you, you use to go ahead and link uh, for the process of starting a new appeal. I just clicked the, I just typed that URL. I really think this is wonderful what you do, sir. Thank you. Yeah, no, I... I don't know how you had the time to do it. First, I thought it was a scam. 
Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, ironically, I have less time than most attorneys I, that do this stuff. I actually do more uh, hearings than the average attorney that does this stuff. And I write briefs for every single claim. Most attorneys don't write briefs at all that do this stuff. So kind of the bottom line wow. is um, it, it, it is rough. Um, and, and that's why, just to make it simple, it is between 8 and 10 p.m. Because basically at that point, um, you know, I, I've kind of calmed down. I'm in the final part. Either right now I would normally be writing briefs, but instead I'm doing this. And the other side of the coin is this is not uncommon to what I used to do in the very beginning with my law firm, which was I would, I would go from library to library to go ahead and do seminars. And the seminars would teach people about all the stupid crap that was out there that was being pushed and presented in society. Uh, and, and, you know, there were just all these crazy, stupid things. You know, for example, if you got, you know, if you were able to fill the paperwork, you wouldn't be found disabled. And, you know, if you, if you had COPD, you would automatically be found disabled. Just to me, incredibly stupid things. But to the average person who just didn't know, that was the, the, the law that their friend told them, you know, and all it takes is one friend who basically gets found disabled. And then at that point, you know, they, they tend to espouse, they tend to say, they tend to tell other people, uh, you know, what they think and what's going on and so on and so forth. And as a, as an issue with that, what we run into is uh, people who are found disabled lie or don't realize that they're lying and then spread all these lies as part of it. And, and that's tough. You know, it's, it's a sad thing because the, the code, it's massive. The laws that govern social security disability law, it's absolutely massive. It's an ocean worth of law. And what's tricky about that is that not every attorney should be doing it. I know some attorneys are like, well, I do 10 different aspects of law. And I'm sitting back thinking, you know, I'm just doing one aspect of law and that's more than enough for me to have to go ahead and keep up with. And, you know, they're changing the laws every year. It's it's a constant thing. So but anyways, um, you're going to do your appeal. And here's the thing that I want you to be aware of. When you appeal, you fill out that I-3441 online or the 3441 and 561 online. Here's what I want you to know. When you appeal, the whole purpose of that appeal document, that 3441 or the online appeal is to do a summarized version of your entire application, but it's all just an update. It's an update as to, okay, you know, what did you, uh, you know, any new medical, any new medications, any new work, any new, you know, any academia, any of this stuff. And what that means is that it's checking to see whether or not you've had any updates that which were not shared in between your last denial and going into your new appeal. And the whole point of that is to say, was there a material change? Have your impairments become more severe? And remember, at the initial filing level and the reconsideration level, they spend more time adjudicating usually whether or not a single impairment is the thing that which, you know, the person can be found disabled by. It usually takes an, an administrative law judge or a more advanced DDS rep, something that's been around for a little bit longer, to go ahead and basically... Uh, look at the tougher question. And the tougher question is, okay, considering all of the impairments, would this person still be able to work in the national economy at SGA levels, which is just a fancy way of saying earning the certain okay, they amount. they don't work. They just, this is a kid. This is not for an adult. And that's all I kept finding was stuff for adults. I couldn't find anything for, for a child. And it just overwhelmed me to the point that I just oh, forget it. Because first of all, I have never, ever had to do this. And this is a grandchild of mine, mm -hmm. and I I just had uh, gotten them back from Ohio to Florida. Sure. So the, the whole thing is, is they after I had given them, I didn't even know that they had them on medication. I didn't even know all the things that had been going on. They didn't tell me anything, and they let me uh, once I took legal custody and got him, and he was responding really weird. And uh, after my three days, then he told me probably because he had had his meds, and I go, what meds? And, right. And when he tells me, I don't have them. I'm like, and when I'm calling back, now COVID is taking place, and nobody's responding. Right. So I had to take the initiative, get a doctor for him, went and had it to the doctor, so then I called Social Security, and the lady walked me through and filled out the application. Mm -hmm. So now then I had the, I guess the, the person that was going to adjudicate it, she reached out to me, and told me she needed this, this, and this, and this, and I sent her everything that I had that I need to give. And then uh, she said she wanted to stay doctor to feel. Mm -hmm. Well, the state doctor saw him and diagnosed him um, depression, ADHD. He said he wasn't sure if he was bipolar, 
he didn't want to say bipolar, but he was definitely the other two because of all of what he had been through. And uh, but he's really smart. But the whole point is, so she thinks because he got he's an honor student, basically what I got from her is because he's an honor student, she thinks he's functional like other kids, but he's not. Because in here, I have to, you know, I have to make him take baths. I have to make him uh, brush his teeth and things like that, his hygiene and things like that. Well, and, and a smarter kid, she try to make me think because I keep asking him is why he needs this. It's just it's a word game with him. You understand? Mm-hmm. To to make me like I'm the problem. So he has been through different things since then, and he has worsened because um, he still like is like not on any type of meds, but he has been in a crisis of center for three weeks. Since then, I had to call child services because I was like, I can't handle this, okay? Because I, I'm not like I said, I've never been through anything like this. So you know, they really just don't are no help whatsoever. I don't even know how people deal with them. But they really were no help, and they basically want to say, okay, we're going to make all these appointments. But they did nothing, nothing. So these 60 days have been like a nightmare. I have almost lost my job because of him, because I work from home. So when he doesn't get his way, uh, he gets loud and makes noise, and I have to have it quiet. So then I got to mute the phone, come in, and deal with him, and then go back. And this has been ongoing. And since he's been here, I've been diagnosed, diagnosed with hypertension. I never had it in my whole life. Okay. So I'm like really, I'm really trying to get help, and and I and I don't know what to do. And then I was going to just say forget it because it won't help me. And then somebody said, no, don't forget it. Go on YouTube if you can find one over time. That is the reason why I did it. And you were the only one that I saw that offered the show. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing to me. I don't know what nobody else came but I found it to be amazing. So, so here's that's the reason. Why yeah, here's what I okay. So I'm going to give you a little roadmap to work on. First and foremost, okay. I want you to go look up the three step sequential process. It's called the three step sequential process. Okay. I got that. Okay. Now, the next thing I want you to look up are uh, basically income requirements for the guardian. Okay. The next thing I want you to pull up, um, and, and you said bipolar was. Uh, so let me ask you this: What are the child's top five impairments? But you know specifically, what is the most severe physical? What is the most severe mental? Uh, it is um, his mouth and his attitude. But she, the ADHD uh, and uh, the depression, because he says, um, okay, like this: when he was in the crisis center, he actually felt like uh, he was doing really good not understanding that that's a toxic place. And the kids that's in there all have some type of issue. That, that's why they're there. Because mm-hmm. he did excellent there. I said, because you were toxic and so are they. But he didn't get that. He was like, what do you mean? I said, you're not supposed to do so, like be well there because the people that are there are there because they have issues. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you, you're, you're supposed, to, the whole point is you're not supposed to blend Mm-hmm. But he said, but he said, well, it was just a point wasn't that I was blending, it's that I was dealing with kids that, you know, understand that COVID is shutting everything down, so you can't deal with your, your, your peers, and that's hard for me because I must interact. Well, he, he must be involved, whether mm-hmm. uh, there is something that he is right or wrong or whatever, he needs involvement with children all the time. Mm-hmm. That's what he basically is telling me. So that's not okay. You know, that's not a norm to me. Okay. That if you can't, and then he told me he was addicted to his um, electronics. Okay, I took his phone, I took his tablet, that he had, I took everything. Mm-hmm. I said, if you tell me you're addicted, I'm going to need to see you function without it. Because that's not okay. But he can't see this really goes off. But I won't give him back regardless. Because me, that's not healthy. If that's what you're doing and you got to, where you can interact on all these social media things and stuff, that's not okay. So, so I'm trying to figure, I mean, I, I've had her say that since um, I gave her the stuff that she said, and basically she didn't say none of it was not okay. I mean, she said it definitely says that he definitely needs to have Medicaid, but it doesn't mean that he needs to 
have a check. I don't get it, okay? I really don't get it. Well, His brother was also uh, disabled. At a, uh, but at a, at a mental, not totally mental, but at a level of dysfunctional. Mm-hmm. Um, not, not thinking like everybody else, but he could do everything else, anything else. He did, and they found him eligible. So I'm confused. Okay, so let me kind of give you, this is a complex situation. What's happening is the mother obviously isn't part of the child's life for some reason. The mother can't have the child or is incapable of taking care of the child. And traditionally, the child right. by and through the mother, because the child is under 18, should automatically be obtaining and utilizing Medicaid. So they're saying he should be able to, through a new guardian, hint, hint, making you the new guardian legally, be able to go ahead and utilize Medicaid. What they're also saying is if he had Medicaid, they'd be able to go ahead and do medical work on him, and then the child would get better over time. However, what it sounds like you're saying is he's probably not going to get that much better. So, And you already got him a doctor. You took the initiative, which is amazing. And frankly, the things you're saying, the tough love, the pushing you know, to go ahead and make sure that he's aware of what's going on and not letting the child abuse video games, not letting the child be abusive towards adults, and or you know parental figures or authoritative figures like teachers that's that's excellent if we had more parents like you we would not be in the situation we are in as a country so i want to go through some things with you real quick write these listings down for me because they're super duper important okay for the depression yeah what did you say i was trying to hear on your site when you said about the listing the page that you told me to go to it won't load i don't know what's wrong it's not loading. It just keeps trying, but it's not actually loading. Um, okay, so let's do this. Um, I need you to put in front of secure.ssa. So in front of the secure word, I need you to put uh-huh. HTTPS okay. colon, colon slash slash. Oh, and then, yeah, that. So try that out. Okay, let me go. Yeah. I've been talking to you, waiting for it to load, and... Um, Done it. Are you on Chrome I I or Safari? Yes, I'm, on my, I'm, on my, I'm on my Chromebook. That's good. Yeah, because Chrome's yeah. yeah, Chrome does a good job with it. Um, so try that I'm out. Put the www in front after the um, or just secure. Actually, just yeah, just the HTTP uh, s colon slash okay. slash and then secure. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I want you to check out is uh, you're going to type. I'm trying to go to your listing site. Sure. I couldn't hear part of it when you, okay, it did load, yeah. It says oh, online service not available, though, because of, I don't know, Social Security. Um, if you scroll down, you'll see a little like, thing. Yeah, it looks like a button that says, like, appeal now. That's going to be your button. A button? Okay. I see explore your accessibility options. Um, appeal now. That basically, I don't see it. I see search, menu, languages, mm-hmm. sign in, sign up, and then it says online service not available. So security. I tell you what, let's do this. Email me. And then what I'm going to do is I'll send you some link options uh, specifically uh, okay. for their website. Uh, the email is simple. It's just info at disabilityresolution.com. Again, info at disabilityresolution.com. And then I'll send you the links um, so that basically I can go ahead uh, and review it and then from there get you rolling in the right direction. Okay, so that's info at disabilityresolution.com, right? Yep. And now there's some other things I want you to write down before we pop over to the next person, which is um, first thing I want you to write down. And I see where I see other people calling in and we're going to we're going to get you guys. Don't worry. We're going to go ahead and get you guys on the show. But here's the big thing. I'm so sorry if I'm picking up too much time. No, it's OK. Don't worry about it. I want you to write down the following numbers. Um, SSA listing 112.04. Again, SSA child listing. 112.04, and I also want you to write down SSA child listing 112.11. Again, SSA child listing 112.11.
And then the other thing that I think is interesting is that the child is doing particularly well in school, but the child has functional ability restrictions when it comes to interacting with other people, which sounds to me like there might be some autism spectrum based issues there. So also look up uh, uh, disability child listing 112.10, again, 112.10. That's super duper important because that'll get you kind of going in the right direction with all these things, okay? Yes, he's an honest student. He does well he's in school, but he doesn't do, do well with me. He, he can do well with other people. Teachers don't have any problems with him or anything, but it's something about the fact that because he says I'm too stubborn, because I don't yield. So then he goes into these fits and everything, and um, that's the whole that's the whole thing right there. Uh, I just won't, I won't yield. I'm like, no, you're not. You're going to have to do this the right way. So school, he's great because he likes to be in, he likes to be in college. Anything that draws that attention, he's good at. Gotcha. And I then gotcha. after that, he shuts down. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and pop over to the next caller. Shoot me an email, and I'll help you out. And uh, you know, keep in mind tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be, you know, Fridays and Mondays are tough for me because I truly do process more claims uh, than most attorneys that do this. In fact, uh, it, it's it's about one and three fourths more than the average attorney that does this for a living. So um, Fridays and Mondays are tough, but I do work on Saturday and Sunday, so I can always get back to you then. Okay. Well, the, the whole thing is I'm at my last day because yesterday was, the, I guess, the 60th day. So now I'm working with the five. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually... Yeah, I'm actually a Sabbath keeper, so I do nothing on Saturday. Okay. It's a gotcha. holy day. It's a holy day. Sure. And I, I, I just wanted to try to do this tomorrow and get it done. I, I wanted to just get the information so I could sit down and do the form. Can I send it to them online, or do I need to just fax it or mail it? Um, you can send it to them uh, online. Uh, you can – well, here's the thing. You're not going to have uh, – you're not going to have their email. You're going to have to fax it to them, or you're going to have to mail it to them. One day you'll be able to email to them or upload it through your online SSA profile, but they're, they're not they're not there yet. Okay, so let me ask you this, so I can let you go to the next question. Um, if I okay, I'm going to try to I'm going to go and do this tomorrow because I'm off. It's the only day I'm off is tomorrow, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm if you, the, the site for the listing. What is that? Where is that at? Uh, you just Google it. Those are the things you Google, and it'll pop right up. Google, what am I Google? Uh, those numbers that child, I gave you. So, child yeah, child oh, listing. The numbers in? Yeah, exactly. That'll pop right up. Okay. Okay, so that, I get that. Once I get the form, then the 560, the SSA 561, and the SSA 3441, I can get that right on the um, um, Social Security site you're saying. Uh, when you told me to go to appeal, um, what was the S? Uh, appeal SSA. Disability claim, mm -hmm. social security, or did you say disability claim or social security claim? Well, you, could, both. you could put either or. Basically, it'll pop up in Google, and you'll see that you can link right to it for the appeal. Will I be able to get those forms there? Um, if you just search the form names, SSA 561 form, SSA oh, okay. 3441 form, okay. it'll pop up. You can print them right out. Okay, so I print out all the forms, and then I submit a letter with it. So now, if I... I'm, if I mail it, I'm going to mail it by, uh, um, priority mail, so I get a return receipt. Yeah. So re does it matter as, as long as it's dated that by before that last day, that, that fifth day, correct? Here's the thing: with non-represented claimants, like when you don't have an attorney, they let you guys fudge it a little bit when it comes to like the deadline. Sometimes they'll hold you to the line, but it's rare. The bottom line is they, they they'll basically go ahead and uh, you know even if you're just a tad bit late, they'll usually allow it to go through. Another thing you can do is you can just send a letter to the SSA or call them and say, hey, look, guys, um, I'm going to be a little late with this. And that gives you, uh, that tolls it, so you get even more time after that. Okay. I'm going to call the worker that did the application because she was real helpful and let her know, because I've been stretched with this kid from those 60 days. Like I said, I ended up on um, medication myself for hypertension, sure. and I never had it. So I, I'm, I'm not going to hold you up. You're wonderful. Thank I'm you. going to subscribe. I'm going to give you five stars. And anybody that don't appreciate what you do, I don't know what's wrong with them. Thank you. You don't have to do this. I you're appreciate You're doing it. this for free. Yeah. There should be no, no negativity from this whatsoever. Thank you so much, sir.
Uh, it, whatever happens, I'm going to come back to you and say, I'm not techie, but somehow I'm going to let you know the results because I, I think that's important for you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, ma'am. Have well, a wonderful you. night, and I'll catch you a little bit later. Thank you, Walter, for all you do. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello? Howdy, good sir. Attorney Walter Knott, you are live on YouTube. Make sure you use a fake name while you're on here. How can I help you? Good. Um, thank you for accepting my call. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm in the process of Social Security um, disability uh, claim. Mm -hmm. And um, I filed it. I hired two what you call the big box uh, law firms. To definitely um, two uh, big mistakes. Sure. I uh, terminated it, though. I couldn't deal with not being able to talk to people when I called. Um, so I, I, I'm doing it myself, and I've already filled out the application, and I was just finally diagnosed with the facet arthritis bone spurs and, and the compression on the nerves and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Is that enough to win a disability case using the grid rules also? How old are you? I'll be 62 in March. I'm 61 right now. Uh, what were the types of jobs that you did within the past 15 years? And then also remember, go ahead and mute um, your computer because it's, it's doing a little bit of a feedback. Um, there we go. Perfect. Um, so, okay. So here's basically, um, walk me through past 15 years. What were the types of jobs that you did? One job for the last 17 years. I've been gone from it. I left May 31st of 2019. I was a transit bus driver for the, the city that I live in. Yeah. In Florida. Yep. I'm just below where you're at. Okay. Um, yeah. In Port St. Lucie, if you know where that's at. I was I was Facebook marketplacing there the other day. <laughs> the other day. Indeed, indeed. Yep. Um, okay, so let me ask you this. Um, uh, what's your alleged onset date, uh, and how old were you uh, at your alleged onset date? Um, I was 50. Was I 60 yet? Um, I'm bad at this. Hold on for yeah. a second. 59 or 60, I can't, I should have been, I was 60. You were close to 60 or you were 60, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. So here's the deal. Um, well, here, let me, let me get it. Let me get it. Hold on. I'll, I'll do the, I'll do the calculation for you. Um, okay. What, what's your birthday? Uh, 321 59, March 21st. Okay, cool. 59. All right, now walk me through this. Also, probably the greatest year in music, especially for rock and roll, to be born. Um, that's the best year of the uh, Les Pauls, the Strats, everything. That is the holy year. But now walk me through this. You're talking to a 40-year 40, uh, 40 drummer right here. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. I've yeah, got I've a uh, musician all my life. I've got an early uh, seven-piece Quilted Maple DW kit from the very, very uh, early vintage. And I don't use it ever, but... Um, you know, anyways, but okay. And what, what, what's the date of your alleged onset date? I made it. They asked me for one. This has been going on and off for 20 years. I've been in pain, mm -hmm. but I've just lived with it because I had a family to take care of. And I didn't understand anything about social security disability. Plus I was at one of those guys. I don't want to take nothing from nobody. I can work. But May 31st is when I finally left the job because it got to be, it was now an everyday occurrence of pain, gotcha. no matter what I did. And it got real bad this last year and a half. Gotcha. So I left on May the 31st, 2019. Okay. So let me and go I on. filed uh -huh. August of this year, 2020, August 4th. I filled out the application with Social Security. So it was May of 2019 or May of 2020? May of 2019. 
Okay. All right. So that means we can't use that month because that was a month that you were still working. And what day did you what day did you stop working? Was it earlier in the month or later in the month? Uh, no, late. It, my last day of work was May thirty. Was May thirty first. Oh, all right, that was the very end of it. Okay. Did you receive any benefits or income related, you know, assets from the company directly after that? Not a nickel. Okay. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do is your earliest day that you can basically claim would be June. Let's just put it as June 30th, 2019, uh, because you had SGA those other years, which would make you 60 years, three months, and nine days. Right. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. Now, um, real quick, um, I want to go through this. Uh, what's the highest level of education that you have? 12th grade. All right. Just, just barely. Okay. So basically yeah. here, here's the deal. I don't know how severe those impairments are or what your medical doctor is saying about the severity of them. They could be trace, mild, moderate, severe, or extreme. So the bottom line is, you know, I don't know if they're moderate or if they're, you know, I, basic. Think, they, I think they put in the report advanced. Okay. All right. Good. With osteophytes and they used a bunch of fancy you know, terms. Yeah. So basically, you got granules growing all over the place on your bones and your spine. Yep. Okay. Cool. Uh, on the on the lumbar and the cervical. Gotcha. So so we got a crunchy spine yeah, all over the place. That's no bueno. <laughs> that's not. That's no good. All right. So here's what it comes yeah. down to. They are almost okay. certainly going to grid you out. I can't promise, but they're almost certainly going to grid you out. And here's why. You got a high school education, which helps. Uh, you, you, and there's no additionals, right? There's no high school specialty. There's no college. There's no AA. There's no, you know, there's no master. There's I've no, yeah. I've driven commercial vehicles my whole life since I'm out of high school. And I've done manual labor doing the, the commercial vehicles and worked in warehouses while I was driving the commercial vehicles. So, no, there's no extra. I can't even operate you should have seen what it was to call you on this phone right now mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm illiterate when it comes to that gotcha gotcha so here's basically what i would say um they're probably going to go ahead and grid you out um which is excellent um the, you'll the, now make sure you set your alleged onset date specifically as the june 30th 2019 and the reasoning for that is that otherwise you have months that are equating to SGA, which is substantial gainful activity, which makes you ineligible. So that's the earliest day you can go ahead and request being June 30th, 2019. Don't let the big box. I've had four people call in this week, which, you know, it's Friday already. But the amount of people that called about this particular issue, you know, there are a lot of people that call in, but this particular issue. They had a big box firm. The big box firm got greedy and tried to go too many months back. There was SGA earnings. The judge used that to go ahead and get a quick denial to add to their quota. And boom, all of a sudden, a claim that should have gone through didn't go through. They got greedy. They were trying to do a little bit of months here and a little bit of months here and the rest of the months here. No, the judges don't want that. So the bottom line here is this. You're going to choose June 30th, 2019. Now, remember, for okay, us, gave them May 31st that going to be a problem i personally did that yeah you can just change that you can just go ahead so what you're going to do is you're going to go online you're going to download ssa 795 again ssa 795 form 795 yeah okay and basically what happens at that point is um you're going to go ahead and write on there that i want to amend my AOD, I want to amend my AOD to, AOD. yeah, I want to amend my AOD to, and you're going to put down June 30th, 2019. Okay. Um, and then what you'll do is you go ahead and fax it into the OHO. Okay. And that should help fix that. That way the judge can't get a quick denial on something that violates the SGA rule, which is element one, by the way. SGA is like the beginning of the five elements. And if you screw up the beginning of the five elements, it 
but you can't you can't right, go past right. it. You know, it's like you got to get the first one, second one, third one, fourth yeah. one, fifth. You know, you got to right, right, right. Yeah, there's stairs. You know, you got to in order to climb the next one, you got to yada yada. So, um, all right. So good. So this is what I would say. Um, I, I'm almost certain you, if you run into an issue and you do get a denial, that means that the medical professionals, here's what a lot of the administrative law judges are doing, especially during these COVID times. When they see individuals who have these medical, con uh, let me simplify it. They, they try to send you to an ME. The ME will give a crap report and say, you're not that bad. And then they'll look at the ones that you have. And then basically from there, They'll go ahead and uh, say, well, the weight of the evidence is more likely to conclude that the medical expert that we sent you to uh, was more properly and thoroughly reviewed by other physicians and had similar diagnostic impression levels and things like that. And then they'll say, you know, the doctor that said you were really super duper disabled they're you know, they're, they're they're just, you know, the weight of the evidence is not with them. I grant less weight to that particular evidence. Um, and uh, whatchamacallit. Um uh, hold on, I got to send this guy a quick thing on here. Uh, howdy, please call once I hop off the phone. Perfect. Uh, so basically what that means is that you, <clears throat> to be fair, you, you, they might try that tactic on you, but they're not gonna. Here's why. You're too cheap of a date. Okay, you are not the, you're not the steak dinner problem. Okay, and, and I don't mean that in a mean way. I'm sure you're a lovely person that likes steak. I, I you know, I, I'm sure you know a nice wine, nice you know, bottle of whatever, maybe you know, whatever you know, a few mashed potatoes, whatever, steak fries. I'm I'm all for it. So I'm sure you know, but you're not you're not expensive, meaning that you're you're too old. You're too old, right? If you were 13 years old, they'd be like, oh, I don't want to pay this kid. It's going to be three hundred thousand dollars over the life of him. But you're old. You're 60 plus. You're, you know, if you look at the, if you look at the, at the park, right, of shoots and ladders and slides, you know, you're, you're coming down the slide at this point, you know, yeah. you know, you're, you're in well, the wine. That's kind of what I figured. You're right. That you're I right. was right in the right spot because I'm going to collect social security. That's another question I have for you before you get off with me, uh, but go ahead keep going. I'm sorry. So basically what this it comes down to, and it's really, it's really simple and straightforward. They're going to grid you out. You're not going to have CDRs, continuing disability reviews, purely because you're just too old. You're too cheap of a date for them to pay. And around the corner, remember, you're going to go on SSDI. You're going to ride that program right till you get to 66, 67. You're going to transition over to your full retirement. They didn't really lose much on you. You know, you worked. You paid into the system. You're a good American hero, citizen, achiever, whatever you want to say, um, bus driving tough man you know you're a good guy so you paid into the system you're good so um they're they're gonna push it through now here's here's something most big box box firms totally f up they f it up and it's not just the alleged onset date thing here's what they f up please for the love of god and i love you dearly i'm just kidding but i love you dearly please for the love of god when the when the judge asks you about things they're not going to come out and say the question I always have, which is, what are your top five most severe impairments? That's not a question judges ever ask. I ask it because my claimants are always prepared to go boom, 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 right? I want you to lay it out. I want bullet points. I want to feel the burn. I want to know all the impairments real quick. Do, do not let your big box lawyer F up and only bring up one impairment. They do it all the time. It's misery for me, and here's why. Okay, I don't have – that's what I was saying. I don't have any lawyers anymore. I fired both firms. Oh, okay, cool. All right, so when's, when's your hearing? both of them. I'm solo. When, <laughs> when's your hearing? I, I'm still at the beginning. All, all I've done so far is filled out the original application – a lady contacted me from Social Security and took all my information about my doctors and my pills and, you know, that I take and what, you know, what my symptoms were and all this kind of stuff. That's all I'm at right now, two months. Okay. All right. So you're at the baby steps of this whole thing. You're at the intro. Um, did you go to a hearing with the prior attorney? No, no, no. They've never did. No, we didn't do. 
they sent a couple forms, that was it. Mm -hmm. No, I fired them too quick. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Okay. All right, so here's what I would say when it comes down to it. Uh, the bottom line here is, here's another thing. When you fill out these forms, everything has to be an explanation as to what you cannot do. It can't be one of these right. gigs where you're like, oh, I can play bocce ball, and I can go surfing, and I can go surfing on the top of a roof of a Jeep from 1959 that Willie built. It can't be like that. And, and here's right. why. If you're, you know, look, let me ask you this. I'm going to ask you some tough questions. Um, sure. Were you prescribed uh, a walker, crutch, cane, sling, or some sort of wheelchair? No. Cool. You're going to get dinged heavily for that. Let me ask you another question. How's your balance? Not great. I don't but believe you. Every... I don't believe you. You know why? No. Because you haven't been prescribed a walker or a wheelchair. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay, I understand. Now I see what you're saying. Yeah. So let I me... got you. Let me ask you this. Um, now, when it comes down to, for example, uh, you know, oh, well, I think my dog is eating one of the uh, wires. Sweetie. So what happens is this. Yeah, all of a sudden you guys are going to see the whole video gets really dark. <laughs> but uh, here's basically the deal. Um, when it comes down to, hi, sweetie, no. Hey, no, no. I tell you what, hang out real quick. I have to go ahead and put her outside because she is going That's to eat fine. through an electrical cord. Guys, I will be right back. Give me two minutes, and uh, I'm going to use the very complex, very expensive cover for the camera known as a sticky note. Boop. I'll be right back. Hold on, guys. Okay. All right. I know you don't care though. Okay, very good. Let me go ahead and utilize my sticky note of, of perfection. All right, so here's what you need to know. <clears throat> um, when you're filling out these forms, best thing you can do is go watch the top 50 ALJ trick questions. The top 50 ALJ trick questions. It's a playlist, top 50 ALJ trick questions. Go watch it. They're the little things that they use to go ahead and you know kind of dig deep. It'll also teach you about essentially what they're looking for uh, when asking you particular types of questions on the 3373. The 3373 is the form about medications, what do you do all day, you have any hobbies, have any pets, have any kids, uh, you know, have any spouses, anything. So with that said, um, go watch that. The other thing you want to go watch are the top 200 uh, social or disability hearing questions, the top 200 Social Security disability uh, hearing questions. That'll help you immensely uh, with the process related to uh, understanding kind of the tricks and little things that are popping up. Now, when you fill out these forms, don't leave things blank. A lot of people like to leave things blank, especially on the, do you have any personal upkeep limitations? I don't know what it is with everybody, but they like to go ahead and leave that section blank. And that's like, you know, can you do, can you get dressed? Can you do, take a shower? Can you go to the bathroom? Can you, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, look, right. so let me, let me ask you this. Do you have any personal upkeep issues? Um, it's hard to do everything because I can't move good anymore. I'm so stiff. I can barely, you know, er everything is not fluid anymore. Mm-hmm. So the smallest thing, uh, you know, my arms up to wash my hair is is a chore. You know, some, just as simple as that. Everything is now a chore. That was a horrible Where answer. <laughs> that, was, that was terrible. Oh, God. All right. Look, let me give you a good answer. Okay. Let me just, I'm going to give you words. If they, to be fair, are accurate. You are allowed to steal them 
And I mean, steal them like you're robbing a bank. Here we go. Uh, good, sir. Um, I have difficulty with my uh, household functions. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about them. Number one, I have a hard time putting on shoes. I have a difficult time tying my shoelaces. I have a hard time leaning forward to go ahead and put the shoe on. I have a hard time getting out of bed to go ahead and put my leg over the side of the bed to lower myself down proficiently. I have a hard time buttoning buttons and zippering zippers. I also have a hard time lifting my shoes at times. I want to tell you about my shower experiences. I have to go ahead and climb over a small area in order to get into the shower. I'm unable to do that very well. I have to use special assistive bars to go ahead and get me into the shower. And also, it should be known that when I'm walking, I can't walk over curbs. I have to go ahead and have something that can lead me up from difficulty with lifting my legs due to the shocking pain that I have that shoots down from my spine, which is terribly, wonderfully horrible. All right, let's go on to the next thing. When I have to go to the bathroom, it's difficult for me to sit down, stand up, reach behind, and or reach out to get the toilet paper. When I have to go ahead and cook, it's incredibly difficult for me because it's hard for me to lift pots and pans, stand by the stove, follow recipes, read recipes, take oral statements from people to complete recipes. Yeah, man, this, you know, that's a good answer. That's got some meatballs to it. Your answer was like a grape, and that's fine. You know, everybody likes a grape, but we need, we need sustenance. We need an Italian meal, you know? Um, yeah. So, but we don't want you cooking it. We want somebody else in the house cooking, <laughs> cooking yeah. it. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Perfect. So, um, okay. Um, what, what area of the country are you in? Florida. Oh, the best part of the country. All right. So, um, and look, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a naysayer against places like, Oregon, California, New Jersey, you know, um, Georgia, uh, or other places. I don't want to be a naysayer against those places, but if you have ever been to Florida, or if you're watching this show and wondering what Florida is like, imagine tropical paradise pictures, and then just imagine people being happy. And that's what it is, plus hurricanes, giant mosquitoes that know how to beat people with baseball bats. And of course, of course, uh, you know, basically, we also have the issue of uh, I'm trying to think of something negative about Florida, but it's just not coming to me. I have so many for New Jersey, but none for Florida. Help me out. What's another negative thing for Florida? Uh, there's not too many. <laughs> uh, Again, another terrible answer. What are we going to do? <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Um, what, what, what about? I see why I never filed Social Security tests. That's right. That's oh, alligators. That's that's good. That's good. We have we have gators. I have one over there right now. Um, yes, gators are uh, not good to hug or kiss. They're just not. Uh, they're toothy people. So, all right. Um, with that said, good sir, do you have any other questions for me? Yeah. Um, can I file for? Um my regular social security while i'm doing the social security disability yes Am I allowed to? you should take your early retirement it will reduce your full retirement that you could potentially get but basically once you get found for ssdi they'll switch you over to ssdi and then you'll ride that out until you can get the most of your retirement that's left okay so it's i can still get a check though every month and starting march correct if I, okay, that's what I wasn't sure about. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, um, you answered, <laughs> you, you've been great. I really appreciate this. this. is a good thing. I've been following you on YouTube for the last couple months now, so, and I'm going to keep on doing that. Excellent, good sir. Very good. If you get a chance, go on to Avo or Google and leave five stars. I'm trying to uh, make a little farm where I harvest them. And the problem is not everybody likes to pull out five-star tomatoes because it's a little bit of work to fill them out. But I would I would say this, it helps me be competitive against the mega machines out there that pay, you know, two thousand to five thousand dollars to Google every month. Some of them pay a hundred thousand dollars to Google every month. But the bottom line is it helps me be competitive because people see that right. and they say, Wow, that's really great, you know? So yeah. I will. I will do so. Perfect, good sir. Have a wonderful night and I will catch you later. All right, take care. Thank you very much for your help. Absolutely good, sir. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Okay, guys, what we're going to do now is, oh, wow, that was, okay, you beat me to it. You beat me to it there. Okay, so what we're going to do is, howdy, good sir, attorney Walter Rudolph, not the third. Remember, we are live on YouTube. Make sure you use a fake name. Um, how you doing? I'm doing well, man. Uh, thanks for answering my call. Oh, good, good, good. So, uh, my question's fairly quick. I'll give you, or I'll try to give you a quick background of everything served in the U.S. Coast Guard okay. uh, with the helicopter rescue support for about five years. Okay. Uh, the downside of being a helicopter rescue star is not only are you dealing with the mental health aspect of it, but uh, of rescuing bodies and everything, but you're also dealing with the physical aspects of getting thrown into 40-foot swells daily. Um, yeah. I had over 300 rescue uh, missions cataloged after that. I pretty much stopped counting them um, over that five-year stretch. And when I got out, I was diagnosed my last year. I was diagnosed with PTSD, mm -hmm. anxiety, depression, number of mental health problems, um, experienced a, uh, a sexual, uh, actually, I'll just be honest about it. I watched mm -hmm. uh, my sister get raped. Actually, I woke up to my sister getting raped um, after I went on a pretty bad case myself. About a year before that, um, I had gotten drugged and raped as well. So kind of a bad experience. Um, it's been rough coming from that. Um, ended up landing in the workforce quickly after getting out of the military. Mm -hmm. And filed for a VA disability benefit. Uh, mm -hmm. was awarded very quickly mm -hmm. um, and was rated at 70% level. The biggest mistake of my life is I, I never fought further for it. I never, you know, went back and argued any of my other uh, disabilities that I had, I had claimed for at that point. Um, about a year later, um, actually a couple months into my first job, I ended up losing my job. Uh, I had a couple of pretty episodes at work, mm -hmm. and basically I had a conversation with my boss at the time, and he effectively told me, look, man, I don't want to fire you. You're a great guy. I feel, I feel for you, um, but I, I want to see you go get some help. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'd love to have you come back. You're, you're a great employee, but, it, you know, you're clearly struggling. Um, so this is where my future father-in-law ended up hiring me at his firm. Mm -hmm. And I worked for him for the better part of the last decade, um, up until 2018. Um, ended up having a similar situation arise uh, in the workplace where, you know, uh, a lot of the other employees that worked there um, were working around my PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, he hired me knowing very well of my conditions mm -hmm. um, and wanted me to get a second chance. Um, and it just progressively got worse as time went on. Mm -hmm. Uh, not in the sense of my disability then, per se, but my, uh, I would say the, the, the other employees, the other people that were around me, mm -hmm. um, started getting more and more frustrated as time went on. Okay. Um, left the business in 2018. Um, Kind of a similar situation where we, you know, he pretty much said, I'm eliminating your position. I'm really sorry, but it's become too disruptive for everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, filed for, as I was planning on filing for SSDI in 2019. Um, but as you know, PTSD, it's, PTSD, it's um, not so uncommon for somebody to kind of put something off for about a year extra and um, ended up uh, filing um, earlier this year, eventually. Mm -hmm. um, the first two denials really quickly um, and then went into the hearing phase. Um, I had RFCs from my acting psychiatrist, psychologist, a statement from my um, primary physician, a statement from my uh, psychologist, um, I had a separate psychologist that did a, or not a separate psychologist, but a separate uh, doctor do a uh, ADHD examination, which I uh, came back with extreme, uh, a, a, I would say a fairly severe case. Um, 
that had been untreated for the last, you know, years. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, um, got statements from all of them, got RFCs from all of them. Um, earlier this year, probably within a week or two of me filing, I actually had, um, an episode where I had a, a, a where a herniated disc at my L5S1. Mm -hmm. um, and going back through my data and my, my VA records, I actually, um, I found some uh, previous notes from like 2005 through 2007 where there was clear indicators that this was like an early stage of something that was noted mm -hmm. um, in my file. That was just something that was never treated. I mean, I was so young. I was in my early 20s at the time, late, late, you know, I was 19, uh, 17 to 20, 22, 23 at that point. So okay. it wasn't something that was obviously imaged or addressed or, or even documented at that point thoroughly. So ended up finding out. Yeah, in fact, I do have a herniated disc in my L5S1 earlier this year. And then... Um, while doing that, they had also found stenosis, spondylosis, uh, degenerative disc disease, um, osteolysis in my in my collarbone, mm -hmm. and tendonitis in my shoulder, as well as a hip impingement in my left hip. All of these um, were directly related to um, the cases that I was on uh, back when I was in the military, um, just simply from the exposure to the amount of extra work that was uh, and trauma that was placed on the young like men that sort of thing. Um, these were all also, you know, medical opinions from other doctors had already given me uh, earlier this year. Found all my stuff, um, hired a local law, law team in West Arkansas that specializes in um, acting, uh, social security, it seems like. Mm -hmm. um, and they ended up um, taking me to, uh, to or actually have a hearing this past Monday. So, interestingly about my hearing, um, the question that I have really is about um, my ALJ, she got on the call like 20 minutes late. Um, I found out later that they had already prepared like over 15 pages in their memo that they submitted to her. Mm -hmm. And they're like, this is pretty, you know, like, this is, this is what my lawyer told me, but he's like, that's like three times the amount of what I normally prepare for a memo. I just want you to know that. And she, he's like, that's probably why she was so late. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't ask any questions in the upfront other than, you know, obviously the typical, what's your social, what's your date of birth, birthday, your, um, uh, your name, you know, your address, that sort of thing. And at that point she was like, okay, well, uh, you know, Mr. Lawyer, do you want to uh, go ahead and ask your the claimant some questions? Mm -hmm. Well, she didn't know how to, I think, really handle that. And she literally went through an hour of questioning. Um, talked about my anxiety, talked about my depression, everything. You know, we went through every question that I could think of. And I did my best to answer them as best as I could. Um, it went back to her. And only two questions that she had for me. One was with regards to a program through the VA called the caregiver program. Mm -hmm. And she said, I see here that your wife had applied for the caregiver program uh, through the VA earlier this year. You know, it, was she approved or denied? And I said she was denied. Um, there's, I can go further in on that. Um, mm -hmm. But if you would like, um, but I, I, at that point, she just said, okay, and did you, you know, I hear that, you know, you talked about how, how you have side effects for um, for dizziness and all these other things, and your uh, physical therapist had notated on his notes that you do use a cane occasionally, and I said, yes, ma'am. I, you know, when my wife isn't around the house, if I'm at home alone, I sometimes may use the cane to help myself get out of bed and get over, give you the restroom and back to bed, but that's it. Um, I don't ever really go out in public with it. I'm, you know, kind of ashamed being 32 years old and, and moving around and having all these back problems and, and not to mention all the other side effects that are caused from some of the medications that I'm on. So kind of straight away from that completely. Mm -hmm. um, after that, the only three questions or the only, she had three hypotheticals for the, um, 
for the um, vocational expert. Mm -hmm. It was pretty simple. The vocational expert, you know, she basically gave every condition that I had to the vocational expert, and it came back with zero uh, jobs available. Mm -hmm. She then eliminated everything except for my mental health stuff, so just the physical aspects, and it came back with like 45,000 jobs or something in the nation. Mm -hmm. And then she added in... um, 15% 15% of his day would be um, distracted. Mm-hmm. Off task, uh, sure. Like, yeah. um, I forget what she said. It was like something like, you know, distracted or um, unable to focus or something like that. And that came back with zero jobs available. And at that point, she said, okay, Mr. Herc, uh, or okay, Mr. Justin, sorry, I want to keep the, my privacy, of course. Sure. Um, uh, you know, I'll, uh, you know, thank you for your time. That's all I needed to hear. You know, and then she went out of closing, you know, or asked my, my lawyer if he wanted to, of course, um, cross-examine the, the vocational expert. And then after that, the, the hearing ended. I got off the phone, got back on the phone with my uh, lawyer, and he's like, okay, well, we'll just see what happens. And that feeling um, of not knowing what to happen is, is just, driving me crazy um and i'm just i wanted to get your second opinion on kind of what your thoughts were on on the vocational expert stuff and um you know i guess where you think what uh, three jobs were proffered by the vocational expert to the judge that's what i want to know three jobs that were offered yeah uh one was a mental um, it was like an equipment rental, um, something or another, mm-hmm. uh, which doesn't make any sense to me because I'm hypervigilant. I have issue with people directly. Mm-hmm. Um, that's you know clearly doc- documented mm-hmm. in my files. Um, the other two jobs I don't recall because um, at that point my lawyer was being frustrated with. The, the examiner um, and the, or sorry, the vocational expert. And so he was like texting my phone so I couldn't really hear it, uh, what they were going over. Um, because I was reading his text messages, so like concerned about like, what is, why is my lawyer texting me right now? But All right. So j- just a little side note. Um, okay. So why was he upset with the vocational expert? What seemed to be the thing that was bugging your attorney? Because, you know, I, I don't oh, usually. Uh, they were, they yeah. were, so one of my issues with my uh, with my left shoulder is tendonitis. Uh-huh. Um, and I uh, it's uh, I so when I went in for my physical exam earlier this year with the Social Security people, um, they noted that I have the inability to to bring my elbow above my shoulder. Um, so they were it, the ALG. The ALJ and my uh, vocational officer were kind of arguing back and forth about how they wanted to categorize that. Mm-hmm. Um, and eventually, the judge was like, you know, just told the vocational officer basically just stop arguing with him. And uh, what were they arguing over? Block off any jobs available for my left arm. What were they arguing over? I mean, what, what really got him going? I'm sorry, you cut out. Well, what were they arguing over? What really got him going? Oh, they were arguing over, because um, he was saying that the uh, left arm, the way that I, the categorization of my left arm would be, um, was that he couldn't, because she had originally asked for him to, um, she had originally asked for him to, uh, to dictate that, like, my left arm couldn't reach up and forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, like beyond that 90 degree level, mm-hmm. um, up and forward. And his argument was, uh, well, I can't really just do up and forward. I would have to be lateral as well. And they were like, it, it's not like. All right. So know, range it, of motion. She, it, she, yeah, I yeah, got she was explaining to him like, okay, well, like just knock it all out. And he was like, well, if I knock it all out, then da, 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 da. And she was like, I told you to knock it out. Like just the whole entire left arm stop. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. 
All right. Um, my opinion, and how old are you? 32. Highest level of education? Um, highest level of education is high school. Most complex job you've had within the past 15 years? Um, so, financial planner, which I get categorized because I was less than four years. Um, I, they also categorized me under a, um, I think it was a thought appointment maker um, for four years or something like that. Were you ever Baker uh, acted or Marchman acted? Uh, what was that? Were you ever Baker acted or Marchman acted? Uh, you're, it's hard to hear you. I'm sorry. Were you ever Baker acted or Marchman acted? Were I ever, was I ever, I'm sorry. Let me try and get some better service. Sure. So did you, uh, was there ever a situation where you tried to commit suicide and, you know, the police? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that, I mean, that's yeah, absolutely it's heavily documented in my trials. Yeah. I never was, uh, so I never was hospitalized. I was I put, was put through an outpatient treatment um, when I was in service. Um, it was, um, I was put through an outpatient psychiatric, like, rehab slash mental health uh, program. Okay. Over 12 years ago. So not recently. You haven't tried to commit suicide recently. No, and um, I, well, recently in the last three months, I was put on a suicide watch um, by, my, by my mental health team um, for the last four months. Um, and they um, this is a different story, but they, they, the VA locally wanted, uh, had advised me to check myself in for an inpatient program through a uh, program through them. Mm -hmm. um, sure. I didn't refuse care, but I basically told them that I would, you know, I effectively told them I'll happily do that, but I want the recommendation coming from my, my outside doctors not from VA doctors because I have absolutely no trust in their ability to take care of them. Nor do I have any trust in their ability to uh, take care of mental health cases because of just my past experience with them. A lot of people have that feeling. Um, you know, I'm not a VA person myself, so I don't, I don't personally know. But all right, this sounds like a potential approval. It sounds like the judge gave uh, themselves a little bit of wiggle room, specifically uh, with outlining potential jobs in the national economy. But the big keynote here is that the judge gave a 15% off task. I don't know the judge. Uh, are you Florida or are you somewhere else? I'm in Arkansas. Okay. She's actually uh, not only a judge that's based out of Louisiana, but she, mm -hmm. in the last two years, started working in Arkansas. Okay. So basically, just so you know, like, I, you know, I know – all the, you know, Florida judges pretty darn well, um, you know, that I go in front of quite often. But when it comes to like Arkansas or, you know, whatever, Texas and things like I, I just, you know, um, so which McCall. So here's what I would say. The judge could have been just putting it out there as a 15 percent. The way it works is when you're over 10 percent off task, you are work preclusive, which means that there's no jobs in the national economy that which you could do. However, some judges will just throw that out to go ahead and not allow the attorney to ask what's the off task percentage, because then we go into a spiel about, OK, well, what about this? What about that? What about this? One thing I have a question about is, that the, did the judge limit your ability to be on a line? Did, did the judge limit your ability to go ahead and be around uh, machines uh, with moving parts? Oh, yeah, 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 totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she uh, she told me, like, when she was going through the uh, physical stuff, it was like, uh, you know, inability to, you know, it was a light job duty is what she had allowed me, uh, with ability to like lay down and rest. Um, you know, I think it was like so many percentage of the day. Um, um, it was, um, you know, allowed to, or not allowed to touch any like chemicals or anything like that. Didn't allow me to go up the uh, ladders or stairwells. Um, didn't uh, allow 
allow me to crouch, kneel, uh, any of those things. Okay. Uh, this sounds, was, yeah, this sounds like a hypothetical analysis where there were a lot of limitations proffered by the judge. So this is very likely to be uh, an approval. But we must check what was your alleged onset date. So alleged onset date was um, uh, for, uh, so primarily the case was uh, um, filed earlier this year uh, before the herniated disc and all that stuff came up. Um, I'm now actually coming to find out just this week that I probably have a second disc that's herniated at this point. Um, that I and I've been getting physical therapy consistently, you know, and obviously chiropractic care, acupuncture, all this. I mean, I'm in seven doctors with minutes a week. So, um, the uh, alleged onset date of the mental health stuff was March of or April of 2018. I, um, that's when I left work. I filed for um, unemployment benefits. However, when we went through the hearing, um, and this is something that I told my lawyer ahead of time, was, hey, do we want to, you know, like, because we had discussed it earlier this year, I said, do we want to make an adjustment to that because, you know, I don't want to lose this case over me being on unemployment. And his, his question was, well, you know, what was the point of you going on unemployment? And I said, to be honest with you, man, I, my goal was that uh, I was going to get back into the workforce. Um, you know, I started opening up Pandora's box with starting to go back to therapy, starting to actually, you know, not going back to therapy because I'd already been going to therapy for years, but starting to actually re-engage more, more, um, more so than I had been with my mental health team at the time. And I, I started to realize that this was, um, you know, my mental health and my, you know, basically my, my ability to help myself hurt myself is, is more important than me getting a job. All right, well, let me, let me, yeah, I got you. Hundred percent VPAT. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So it's hundred percent rated, but what their category, how they categorize it, is effectively they're saying you're an unemployable person, you know, due to the severity of your PTSD and other conditions. Yeah. Sure. I got you. So just simplify it for me real quick. Keep keep in mind, I'm, you know, I I work every single day, and we're coming to ten o'clock. What day did you choose? Wait a minute, wait a minute. You guys didn't figure out what the heck your AOD was supposed to be before the hearing? Uh, the AOD, uh, um, well, he, I'm sorry, yeah, I didn't know what my AOD was before the hearing. Well, didn't you guys figure out what the alleged onset set date was going to be before the hearing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My onset date and the decision, or the onset date of my, uh, was the date after I started working, I stopped working. But what he told the judge, and that what we had during the hearing, he had explained to the judge was, you know, after we had that same conversation that I just made, was that he, um, that in his opinion, you know, or like from his findings, that he was like, look, you know, Mr. Smith wanted to go back to work, but the severity of his, you know, uh, of his mental health outweighed that. And so at that point, he continued to try and work on himself and better himself to get back in the workforce. But, you know, that was a failure. 
failure. If you would like us to make an amendment to the date, please let me know now. I would be happy to do so. And she's like, no, you know, Mr. Lawyer, it's okay. We don't need to do that. Well, that sucks for you because he just threw you under the bus for your alleged onset date. You picked the date after the work. Obviously, you didn't have all your impairments down. Obviously, you didn't figure out all the little details that you needed. And now push comes to shove. Basically, what you're at is he's saying I, we picked this date, but, you know, we're really OK with a later date because, hey, a later date would be acceptable because, hey, you know, he really didn't have all the medical documentation that he needed until dot, 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 such and such date. Did he even mention a better date or was this more of like a, you know, farther down the line might be a better AOD? Well, his, his argument to uh, what, what he was basically ta telling me before we sat down with the ALJ was that, um, you know, effectively because I went on unemployment, that I wasn't, um, that I was not allowed to, uh, you know, basically receive SSDI benefits for those months at all. And so he was saying, like, you know, we can... If in an ideal world, obviously, we'll get it for, you know, April of 2018. But if not, worst case scenario, she pops you back to October. All right. That was a that was a very bad maneuver on behalf of not only you and your attorney, because now you're putting it on the judge's plate to figure out if this should be an open and closed period, then followed by an open period continuous. You realize you realize that you've now given the judge an AOD that has some months in there that are over SGA uh, for receipt of income from a program, government-based, that you can't be found disabled for. I would immediately amend your alleged onset date to the date after you're receiving those benefits. Make it easy for the judge. Like, no, no offense, but you can't F it up. And that's effing it up. And here's why it's effing it up. You just handed it to the judge an unprepared case. You should have had that figured out before the hearing. Well, that was what I was, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't, you know, I, that's what I was just told literally the whole entire time to my lawyers. I didn't know any better. I didn't find you until Sunday night. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, all right. I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> Terry Smith Sr. just put, don't be effing my case up, bro. That's how I feel sometimes when you guys call in. You're like, and then I did this. And, and you, you, let's be honest, you're one of those schmoozers. Like, you like to, like, take me on a walk. You know, you were in the military, which means you know how to explain yourself out of trouble to your CEO. And I get that. And I'm cool with that. But, you know, you're walking me down this plank and I'm sitting, yeah, sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. But what I'm really thinking is he's hiding something from me that he doesn't feel good about. What is he hiding? What's he hiding from? And then I realized there's 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 something that he didn't feel comfortable with that his attorney did, and now he's sitting there. And what, what you're really asking me is, what's the bad part of this? Where does this potentially flip? Is this all good? Am I am I a solid, fully favorable? Or what you just did was you put yourself into a partially favorable scenario. That's what you did. You you put the power uh, of figuring it out in the judge's hands. And I want to make something really clear to everybody. You never, you never want to make the judge's job hard. I had to learn that the hard way. Okay, I had claims seven years ago that I should have won, right? And I was like, oh, well, you know, maybe the judge will figure it out. No, you never have the judge be put in a position where they got to figure it out. That's it. You so do I call? So do I call my lawyer first thing tomorrow and say, hey, look, I've had a, you know, I've this moment, and I have absolutely no interest in fighting over those six months of, of those disability benefits. I'm cool with that. Here, it, it, like, and when I, you know, the conversation that I had with people on the last couple weeks was, dude, I'm at a point right now physically and mentally where I just need to fix these problems, dude. Like, yeah. I don't have time to, like, I don't, it's not even the money at this point because I have absolutely no faith in the VA actually taking care of me. Um, you know, I, they're fighting me over, over everything just so I can, you know, be able to get physical therapy. Um, just so I can take care of my already existing back problems. When I have their nurses telling me that, you know, my spine looks that, you know, basically looks like it's a person, a seven year old and, you know, 
that I'm only 32 and I've got to make it another 60 years without hopefully making it worse. You know, like I'm just like at this place where, okay, well, I just need to win. I don't care about the back pay. The back pay is like not even an important factor to me. Then why are you getting greedy, bro? Like, what's up with that? No, I'm not. No, literally, that was the recommendation of my lawyer. Yeah, yeah, I know. I got you. Um, That that was. I trust him wholeheartedly. Yeah. And, you know, that's the problem. I put all this faith in in, in him in the process. And, and, well, (laughs) this was the freaking switcher of switcheroos. The partner, the leading partner of the firm, took me on as a a case in the beginning. And then, um, after the second appeal, I got switched to this junior lawyer at the firm. Nice. And that's when, you know, that's when I was like starting to like these red flags. Not to mention that 13, like this year's another factor that I was completely irritated with. My wife was on my ass about making sure we had all our ducks in a row and making sure that they had all the files that they needed. And we were following up with them this whole entire time to make sure that they had everything. You know, it was just like, a, it was kind of a cluster, to be honest with you. Um, so I'm just kind of, you know, I don't care about that six months of pay. Like, that's the least of my concern. What I actually need is the Medicare benefits. You know, to, that's my hope, so I can get the Medicare, have the VA as my secondary, and actually start seeing doctors that I think can actually help me instead of put band aids on my problems. Because for the last 15 years, I've just been getting band aids. It ain't working. Well, then you know what you need to do. You need to make the judge's job very easy and straightforward. Please download a SSA 795 form, fill it out, fax it over to your uh, attorney. Make sure when you put down, I want to uh, change my alleged nonce to date two, dot, dot, dot. Then basically at that point, give me the, the war and peace version uh, of it. Because obviously, as you put it, you had a coming to baby Jesus moment. You were thinking, oh, God, how do I make this for sure? Because let's call it like it is. Your health insurance is going to be worth more per month than the check you're going to get. And it's probably within the first yeah. six months going to be worth more than all the back pay you get. So, yeah. Okay. Well, good, sir. You got a good, sir. Uh, if you get a chance, leave five stars where you can. Every five star. That you leave, uh, a little baby uh, angel gets her wings, I'm told. I'm not actually sure of that. But I will catch you later, and uh, have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you, good sir. Bye-bye. Okay, so guys, there, there was somebody who was very upset um, about me not answering the phone. I am supposed to uh, go ahead and uh, call back a gentleman who had his hearing today. Um, that's very important, um, who actually learned of me through this system. And, and the weird, it was the weirdest. I just want to tell you this real quick. It was the weirdest thing. So he, he tells me after the hearing, he's like, man, you really did a great job. That's awesome. I was like, that's good. It makes me feel good. makes me keep working hard. makes me keep, you know, drinking the, uh, the Kool-Aid to work harder every night. As you can see, my eyes are all bloodshot and terrible and I have these huge things under them. And people my age don't usually have that. Um, you know, they, they're usually much more relaxed because they do other things. But the bottom line is this. Um, he said, you know, I, I, and this is what blew my mind. This is what blew my mind. All right. So a lot of you guys will make fun of me for the initial videos I made when I was in the Prius. Okay. You'll say like, oh, you're the Prius guy. You're the, you know, and many of you don't even really, you'll just say in the car, you know, You won't even know it's a Prius, you know, my little blueberry. Um, And you make fun of me for that. And I'm fine with that because I don't care. You know, it just doesn't, it doesn't injure any part of me. It's just too much fat right here, right now. So the bottom line is he said, when I saw you in your first video, he's like, and I watched other people. When I saw you in your first video in your car, I knew you were the right one. And that shocked me. And, and, and I, I guess what it was, and I don't know exactly for sure was that, I tend to get emotional, which attorneys are not supposed to, but I tend to get emotional. And as a result of that, um, you know, I have feelings about how the system should work. I have feelings about how things should progress with the system. And uh, that means I'll either uh, win the lottery and retire or go into politics, which I never want to do, or uh, end up working for it because the only way to change something is to work for it. That's the only way to do it. Like if you want to change a political party, you got to be part of that political party to change it. 
You can't be on the other side to change it. That's not how it works. A lot of people think that's how it works, but it's not how it works. So anyways, um, I'm going to call the person who called in real quick um, because, um, you know, I think it's the right thing to do, getting bullied into it. Here we go. Hi, this is Attorney Walter Knott. Uh, before you say your real name, make sure you use a fake name. And I don't know if, uh, well, actually, let's skip that part. Madam, how can I help you? I'm Attorney Walter Knott. We're live on YouTube. I think, I think I just got put on hold which is the first time this has ever happened on the show. So we're going to we're going to skip that. That was weird. Um okay, so I'm not sure what happened there. Um I think you put me on hold. Apparently they have a better phone system than I do. All right, let's go over here. Um okay, cool. Let's do this. I'm going to now dial this gentleman uh, and get the ball rolling. Oh, wait, no. Uh, howdy, howdy, madam. I think I got put on hold. Press one to send a voicemail. Press uh, two. Uh, howdy, madam. I think I got put on hold there. To accept, press one to send a voicemail. Press two. Pressing one. Not working. All right, let me, all right, let me try and call him back. You know, it's, you know, everybody knows my phone system sucks, but that's just kind of part of the love. All right. Yeah, it's live. I know. Yeah. Hi, this is Brandy. Leave me a message yeah. and I'll get back to you. Oh, no. It's a song. Howdy, Madame Attorney Walter Not. I just wanted to catch up with you. I am live on YouTube, uh, basically going ahead and... Uh, you know, doing the live YouTube show for disability benefits related to disability resolution PA. I know you called. I tried to call back, and then when I called you and got you, it, it actually put me on hold and played some beautiful music. So either way, give me a call whenever you get a chance, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. 407-279-1754. Again, 407-279-1754. Bye-bye. Okay, as you guys can see, excuse me, we are now in the derailment portion of this show. Let's go ahead and call somebody else. And see what we can do real quick. Let's see. 702. Okay. Howdy, good sir. We are live on YouTube right now. And what I was hoping, make sure you use a fake name. What I was hoping to do is talk to you about your experience with uh, having a hearing today. And specifically, you had kind of a unique experience, which doesn't happen all the time. The judge was not a little late. The judge was super duper extra, extra late. But uh, can you tell me, um, how did your hearing go? When was your hearing supposed to be? And when did your hearing actually start? Uh, the hearing was supposed to be this morning at um, 10.45, and the hearing didn't end up starting until, I believe it was almost two and a half to three hours later is when it actually started. Let me ask you this. Um, you know, while you were waiting and things like that, what were you worried about? Did you feel like the judge forgot you? Did you feel like everything was lost, or did you just kind of feel like, well, we're waiting for the judge? Well, I mean, I, I was I was under the impression I was all prepped, ready for the. I was thinking the 
phone was going to ring right on time or a little bit thereafter. And then as like 30 minutes went by, an hour went by, started, uh, you know, getting anxious, being a little confused as to if they were going to call, did, did they forget, am I supposed to call them? Um, then I kind of forgot about everything I had prepped for. Uh, and the, the longer, the longer it went, um, got a little bit nervous, but it, it eventually, uh, was informed that the judge was just running a little bit late and just had to, uh, adapt to the later calling time. Now, let me ask you this. When the hearing started, was it how you expected it to start? Uh, I had somebody over the weekend tell me, they're like, you know, it's always weird how these hearings start. You know, there's no videos on that. And that's true. There's no videos on, on how that stuff works. But what was your experience with the beginning of the hearing? Um, ironically, the beginning of the hearing, the judge um, pitched it to you to start. I was under the impression the judge would be questioning me from the beginning. Um, so I was thrown off a little bit uh, with with how the pace of the questions would be. Um, and at, at the start of the hearing, I went away completely blank for, for a couple of seconds. But, you know, and then as I got into it, everything came back to me and just felt comfortable saying what I needed to say in regards to my case. Let me ask you this. Um, was the judge, do you feel that the judge was nice to you? Do you feel that the judge was aggressive towards you? Um, I, I felt for the most part he was um, he was fair. I would I would say he was fair. I didn't feel that he was necessarily aggressive, but uh, during the hearing you can tell that the, the judge is, is this is uh, old hat for him. It's with, with with the questioning and whatnot, so it, it does get sort of a quicker quicker pace to it once once the judge gets into asking. Uh, certain questions, you know, kind of jump across from topic to topic. So you really have to be able to move um, in regard to what he's asking you particularly about. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let me ask you this. Um, the hearing questions. There was a point at which the judge said to me, hey, wrap it up. Did you feel that that was a lot of hearing questions or just a few? Um, I, I thought he was sort of curt with you, possibly. It, 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 it felt like we were just getting into some, some questions and thought that might have been possibly a, ne a negative sign going forward. But um, like I said, it was it was completely unfamiliar with me as to the pace of it and, and how long exactly it would be. Uh, certain topics were not covered. Other topics were, were considered much more important. Um, just like anyone else out there, you really don't know what to be prepared for. You have to have um, cover your bases with everything so you're prepared to answer all the questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you this. Why do you feel he wanted to cut me off at the very end of the questioning uh, to shorten, uh, to kind of get us rolling into the next section? I mean, maybe possibly he, he had heard enough to, to make an initial decision to move towards the, the second part of, of the hearing. And, you know, the questions were uh, most of the important questions had, had been answered. Maybe he had all the information he needed at that point. So here's basically where I stand with it and what it comes down to. When that, and I almost said his name, which is not a bueno thing, but when the judge tells me, wrap it up, counselor. Finish it up. Try to get done with your questions. What the judge is saying to me is, I'm in the middle ground to leaning towards finding him disabled. Then we go to the vocational expert section. How did the vocational expert section sound to you? Uh, to, to be honest, I, I really couldn't hear specifically what she was saying. I think she had come up with uh, one, one occupation possibly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in, as a salesman of some sort of over the telephone, I believe is what she had came up with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Did you notice anything unique about the hypothetical question or rather the hypotheticals, the limitations that the judge was giving for your claim? Because that was very unique. Um, 
um, again, when, 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 the, when the judge was speaking with the, um, uh, the uh, individual who comes up with the uh, uh, perspective jobs, it was with being the four people on the phone, I, I couldn't really hear it, hear it that well when they, when they were talking. You know, I couldn't hear them that well either. But just so you know, what was so very, very unique uh, about the hypothetical that the judge gave, and I have not actually ever heard a judge give 25, uh, around there, 25 points of limitation. And the reason why that was was because we were running so late that basically the final hearing, I'm sure, was supposed to be heard around 2, and that basically he was running into, you know, 3.30 at that point for having that hearing. So did you notice that one of the hypothetical limitations that were proffered was a list of many, many, many items? Uh, yes, yes. He seemed to go over um, limitations such as time, time frame limits, limitations such as not being able to do physical limits as well. Okay. And walk me through this. Uh, when it comes to, you know, all those limitations, were you able to understand what they were about? You know, the occasional, the frequently, all that stuff. He was trying to take the occupation and, and, and say, but what about these circumstances? Would it, would it still apply with all these circumstances that factored into the uh, eight-hour day? Okay. So what we're looking at here is the judge was running late. The judge didn't want to ask a bunch of the usual hypotheticals, went right to the heart of the hypothetical he wanted. And then I did something that I don't usually do. Did I have any follow-up questions for the vocational expert? No, you no, no follow-up questions. And the reason why that is, and it's rare when it happens, is that the judge has signaled to me through the statements they've made to shut up, they're going to approve it. I can't promise that they will. But that's what they're doing. They're, they're, they're telling me the basic fundamentals of what they need through in what your case would be a vocational allowance to be found disabled for somebody under 50. So let me ask you this. Um, after the hearing, how did you feel? Um, I mean, I felt somewhat relieved that it, that it was it was all over, all the preparation and uh, going through all the questions, I mean, at that point, it, it was over and done with. And they were going to decide what they were going to decide. Okay. okay. Um, now, uh, what questions did you have for me that you've now had time to think about that you can ask me now um, after the hearing process is over, after I called you back? What questions do you have for me about what happens next? Um most of the questions were just in relation to, to the time frame uh, of, of everything, when to expect the, um, uh, the letter in the mail, um, kind of what, 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 what comes next, where we go from here. You know, we've had the hearing, the hearings, the hearing is over, and then what is the time frame for the next set of circumstances? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Good, sir. You've done an excellent job. I think things are going to go very, very well for you. I will catch up with you um, over the next couple of months as they develop and finalize your brief, and then we'll go from there. Oh, thanks very much, Walter. Have a good night. You as well. Bye-bye. Uh, to answer Terry Smith uh, Sr.'s uh, question real quick, it usually takes about three to four months to get a decision in the mail, which is either unfavorable, partially favorable, or fully favorable. And then basically from there, uh, it'll take about uh, two weeks to a week in a, or two weeks to a month and a week to go ahead and have a decision. Uh, my shoe just caught on the desk and it's now stuck, but we'll pull it off later. But the bottom line is uh, it, it takes about two weeks to a month and a week uh, to go ahead and get your, you know, beginning money and, you know, your back pay, your forward pay, stuff like that. However, if, if the claim is one of those, it's an obvious, they're going to decide it, it gets put on top of the list for shooting out the decision, then in that case, usually, usually takes, uh, you know, from the bench decision about a month and a week to go ahead, or a month and a half uh, to go ahead and get a decision in the mail. All right. Um, now, with that said, the person called back. 
um, we are going to go ahead and try to call them back right now uh, as I look at pictures of the birthday party, which looks fun. Um, looking great. Looking good. Let me go ahead and do this. Now, this is going to be the final phone call because um, I have sleep deprivation due to uh, fun work stuff. So let's go ahead. Hello. Howdy, Madame. Attorney Walter Knott. We're live on YouTube. Make sure you use a fake name. How are you doing? I am doing well. Thank you for returning my call. How are you? Very good. Very good. How can I help you tonight? Okay. So... I am someone who applied for disability in 2017. Mm -hmm. Currently still disabled. Had my hearing in 2019 in front of a judge mm -hmm. uh, via telecom on the screen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was decided to be not disabled. Mm -hmm. So I uh, went to the appeals council, and just as of uh, the end of August, the appeals council sent my case back to the judge. Mm -hmm. You got a remand. So yep. I'm nervous because, A, I don't know if I'm going to get the same judge. And also, I don't know if the judge is going to have some type of um, this concern because they found a flaw in the decision that he made in our first hearing. So how should I be, what should I expect from this judge as far as demeanor or, or I don't know, for the second hearing coming up? So here's how it works. Um, when you received your appeals counsel remand letter, did they specify how the ju judge screwed up and like what things they want the judge to go ahead and prove upon or recheck into or ask questions about? Yes, they did. Okay. And what were those things that they wanted the judge to go into? They wanted the judge to go into my disease and what I was diagnosed. Because in my first hearing, he never asked me anything about how I felt or what I had or what uh, the medications do while i am you know, been diagnosed with these uh, illnesses. Mm -hmm. He never asked me any of that. Okay, so no side effect questions, no impairment questions. Were you represented by an attorney? Yes. And your attorney didn't ask you about those things? Uh, no. And when we left the hearing, my attorney and I thought the hearing was less than 10 minutes. And so we thought that due to the medical evidence that we had, you know, sent in, that we were looking at a um, decision in my favor. Because of, you know, the judge not asking the questions that we would normally think he would ask. Why didn't your attorney ask those questions? So he didn't ask anything except for what can I do and no, what, what, are, what are my hobbies? That's what he asked us. And what is my education as far as how, uh, you know, how far I went in school? Okay. So obviously everybody did an amazing job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes. mm, all right. Um, we're going to begin with the, the awesome part. How old are you? 46. Highest level of education? Associate degree. Last job that you worked? Security. And uh, school assistant teacher. They both at the school. Okay. Um, walk me through this. Uh, past 15 years, what other types of jobs have you done since 2005 going forward? Police officer up until 2017. What happened as a police officer? I uh, was too sick. I had to stop working. Okay, gotcha. All right, let me ask you this. Um, when it comes down to, uh, you know, basically, uh, when, when was the last day that you worked? 
Last day I worked was August 2016. Okay, gotcha. Okay, August 2016. I'm going to bet you a shiny nickel that you don't know what the attorney said as your alleged onset date. Am I correct? I do not know. Okay. Do you know what an alleged onset date is? My onset date, I'm going to say, was, let me see, August, September, October of 2016. Okay. When did you initially file? I filed in 2017, uh, December. Okay. All right. And uh, I'm assuming you picked the month after the month in which you stopped working. Yes. Okay. Was your medical evidence strong back then? Yes, very strong. What did the ALJ say that, to make it sound like, you know, you weren't disabled? Well, he, uh, you talking about in the paperwork that he sent me? In the, in the brief, the unfavorable. Yes, well, what he said was that I was, he felt that I am disabled, but it's not, it's severe, but not severe enough that I could possibly work. Mm -hmm. all right, all right. So, so he said that it's, you know he said that he does agree that I am sick, but not sick enough that I would be able to get um, yeah. you know to, to stop working completely. I can work. He said I can work part time. What part of the country are you in? Are you in Are you in California, New York, Florida? Where Where are you New based? York. New York. All right. New York. All right, so you got to remand back to ALJ. You're going to go in front of the same administrative law judge, the same administrative law. Now, was the judge younger or older? Judge is uh, probably my age, mid, mid 40s, 50s. All right, let me ask you this. Did the judge seem like uh, had a little bit of a aggressiveness to them, like a get her done, let's get her done, let's get her done-ness to them? No, he had a bit of a nonchalant, like uh, maybe not aggressive, but maybe not too into what I was saying. It was like almost like moving on. Okay, you know, like another day at work. I've heard this before. Okay, next. Yeah, I mean, they get jaded. I mean, there's no way. I mean, they, you know, hearing after hearing, they get jaded. I mean, th think about, you know, me. I hear the same story from different people. You know, people, you know, they're like, I can't explain it. And then I explain it to them. They're like, that's perfect. I'm like, exactly. That's what you're going to say. But the bottom line is this. Um, I don't know the judge. So the bottom line is you're going to have to ask your attorney whether or not this judge is the type of judge who basically gets cranky when it gets a remand. Usually the older judges have learned that basically they can go ahead and deny it again. And they don't really care how many times they come back and deny the claim. And you can go in front of that judge two times and then the third time they switch it to a different judge. But basically if you get a denial and get a remand like you did, you go in front of the same judge. If you get another denial and get a remand, you go in front of the same judge again. If you get another denial and a remand, you go in front of a new judge. So the bottom line here is you're going to have to ask your attorney, uh, you know, whether or not this is the type of judge who uh, just knows that they don't really care. They'll just go ahead and do it, find another way to deny the claim. Tell me with specificity. I mean, was this just an open ale, you know, it sounds like it sounds like your attorney kind of screwed up here. I mean, had your attorney gone into all these things, you would have had a better claim on the record. Right? Mm -hmm. I agree. All right. So it, it sounds like the judge didn't believe you, and then your attorney was like, cool, we'll just end the hearing there. Because I was thinking that it's my attorney not asking questions to make my case longer. Is it a money thing? But they're only set for a certain amount of money to keep the claim out longer. You know, you understand? Is he trying to stretch it out in order for me to get a remand? I don't know. I, I was oh, oh, yeah. No, the attorneys don't want to have to go through a remand. Attorneys want the 6K and then they bump. You know, then they're out of the claim and they're good to go. Attorneys don't play the game of remand for more money. They just don't. I mean, here's oh. here's what happens. Once you go to a remand, the 6K limitation is lifted. They just get 25% of the back pay. But the, the bottom line is, the, you know, remands from the AL, from the AAJs, the appellate administrative judges, they're they're rare. You know what I mean? That's a big roll of the dice. So attorneys don't like to play that game. All right. Um, uh, did you go to a medical expert? 
uh, at the ALJ level. Yes. I knew you were leaving stuff out on me. I could feel it. I could feel it. I just knew it. All right. So tell me this. Um, what, what was the medical expert for? <laughs> the medical expert for Social Security? Yeah. He uh, decided that I was disabled. Oh, God. All right. Okay. Um, was it physical medical expert, a mental medical expert? Physical. What was your disabling condition that uh, the medical expert believed you were uh, within statute? Uh, the, my, my lungs were, I, I'm on uh, oxygen, and I have a lung disease called sarcoidosis. Mm -hmm. And it is a, a, a lung disease that is no cure, mm -hmm. and you probably will die from it, but it is slow progressing. Uh, did they do an FEV analysis? Yes. What was your FEV? I don't know my numbers off the top, but I know they were bad. Okay. All right. That's fair. All right. So, um, and the other thing too is like when I ask you these questions, I, you know, uh, most people aren't going to know what their FEV number is. All right. <clears throat> the AAJ. You know, I went to court. Yeah. yeah. I went to court with, with a cane. I went to court with my oxygen machine. He never asked me once because I used in the cane for what the oxygen machine was for. He never, he never asked me anything. And whose fault was that? My attorney. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, we can blame it on the dog, but, you know, it's just, it's not as effective, you know. Um, all right. And uh, what should your attorney have done? No, I'm thinking that he should have requested or brought up. He should have spoken for me because I wanted to say something, but I didn't know what to say. How do I word it? I'm not an attorney. How do I say it without being disrespectful to the court, but wanting the judge to hear everything? So I just wish that he would have spoke about, you know, my illness a little in, in depth and my medications in depth. My medications were never brought up. I'm on over 45 medications. They were never brought up in court. All right, let me ask you this. Um, what are you going to do in the future to make sure your attorney brings up every single uh, disabling impairment that you have, the medications, what they're for, what side effects you have, why you have a cane, why you have air, who prescribed them, how often you use them, how are you going to make sure that your attorney does that? Because um, from watching your videos, I'm going to be interviewing my attorney prior to going to court or prior to signing a agreement to use them as my attorney. I'm going to ask these questions. The other thing I would do just as a backup is I would write down answers to all those questions we just went over, and I would put them into a 795 form. Um, and then basically either submit it to the SSA or just have it in front of you for the actual hearing. That way you can always redirect a question and go into those. Or, you know, when the judge is ready to wrap up, or the attorney's ready to wrap up, you can say, Your Honor, I need to put additional information on the record that has not been addressed. That was an issue from the last hearing. Okay. And I got one more question. Yes. When, due to the COVID, do you think I have a better shot? Because I have a breathing and lung disorder, <laughs> you think I have hmm. a better shot? It's an interesting question, but it's not a long term. You see, okay, so here's the problem with, uh, with that. Normally, if we had a system that was based upon the current, you know, model of vocational options, we could say, yeah, potentially. But the problem is, this virus is going to end at some point because they're going to come out with some cure or some sort of whatever, and then it's just going to end. So they're just going to use the DOT, Dictionary of Occupational Titles, and the SEO to go ahead and say, well, based upon the DOT and the SEO, you know, these are the jobs that potentially she could do, but then she couldn't do these other jobs. So having COVID-based uh, or having a higher likelihood of getting sick and dying from COVID um, should not and would not affect their adjudication because it's just not part of their law system that they use, the books that they reference um, for essentially, because remember, let's say COVID goes away in a year. Let's say COVID goes away in five years, right? So you weren't found disabled because of COVID. 
You were found disabled because of the rules and regulations that existed with the jobs that existed in the national economy based upon a pre-COVID system. Now, look, if they can't find a cure for COVID, even though they pretty much have it in different countries already, but let's say that if they could not find one, which they have, but if they could not, then they would have to alter uh, the system to go ahead and say, okay, well, those with breathing issues, those with, uh, you know, digestion-based issues, those with, you know, issues related to a higher likelihood of, you know, getting COVID, then it would be different. But still, remember, you, you know, you also have the issue getting around, well, why wouldn't you just utilize protective masks? Why wouldn't you utilize, you know, protective breathing apparatus? Why wouldn't you utilize protective gloves? Why wouldn't you utilize protective, uh, you know, hand sanitizers? Then we get into the question of, well, wait a minute, do you have it within your capacity to use these methods to go ahead and keep yourself clean from the virus? In which case you'd have to say yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah understood. You know, but... Um, Excellent. Madame, I am super duper tired. We have re officially reached two hours, one minute and 47 seconds. <laughs> Very good. I will catch you guys a little bit later. And then I want to do one little plug, one little plug. I haven't finished the website for spaceconstitution.com. But if you ever get a chance, the whole idea is I'm making a website where anybody can put down any freedom or right that they want to have in the future, whether the USA has it or China or Israel or whatever. You get to put down whatever freedom you want, and then a, an attorney, me, will go ahead and put it into legal language and a discussion platform, and then people can discuss it. It's cool. It's the first open source constitution. It's the first thing that makes constitutional law cool. Anyways, guys, I will catch you a little bit later. Have a wonderful night, and have an absolutely, absolutely wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.